Quick one for you. I found this interesting. 99.4% of view time on my channel is from non-subscribers. So are you one of those non-subscribers? Please just click the subscribe button there. Is there, if I could point at it like that. Oh, it's maybe there. I don't know. Somewhere or other. You don't know how much this helps a, a YouTube channel when you subscribe, really. Um, it, it does do a lot of good for us. So please, if you could, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Today I'll be reviewing this Skoda Octavia 2021 SE technology in this. Is it blue? Is it purple? Is it rain? Whatever colour you want to call that. It's mostly blue. What on earth is that? Cinturato. On 205-60-68. Is that the same? Come on. Okay. That's what you get with lease cars. Cheapy, cheap, cheap tyres. Anyway, that's the car. It's an estate version. And I'll, I'll briefly show you. The seats drop down. There's a reasonable boot space I've been using. Reasonably comfy back seats. And that's something I haven't talked about as well, is the, the dirt. Two USB-Cs. A little phone pocket. God, the phone obsession is real. We're making that move now, aren't we? That move to USB-C on everything. And we're not ready. This has got USB-C two down here at the front, and then it's got two on the back of the centre console there. And USB-C, in my opinion, a little bit fiddly for cars. So no, I, I would like to have seen, while we're in this period of transitioning from A to C. I, I think one of those could have been an A. I think uh, would have been a good idea. Coming from a, a quieter engine car, I've got a habit of shifting, so it's manual gearbox, of shifting up a gear at quite low revs because it's noisy. It is noisy and it's, you know, it's a diesel and my daily car is a, a petrol with a lot of silences on so maybe that's me and maybe I'd just get used to that with it being a diesel but I've found some steep Yorkshire hills I'm coming up second gear feels to be revving knocking up into third <laughs> struggling and then I realize I've changed gear at only 2,000 rpm maybe and uh, going into third there it's uh, it's just too low so maybe that's me maybe it's uh, Maybe it's a bit of both. Um, engine braking, very little. Maybe an old school driver, I do tend to use engine braking more from my truck driving days as well. And it just feels to run on and on and on and hardly brake at all. I'm starting with things I don't like here, but it is what it is. Uh, there are some things I really do like, and I'll come to those. This button here, all it does is change your, your dashboard like that. But it sticks out a bit and it gets knocked all the time. And it, it must be active when you're getting in and out of the car as well, even though it's not turned on. Because I get in and it's changed. And it, frequently it's it's been pressed. And it, you've done that, you're scrolling through and... Little design fault, little niggle, you know, it's easy to fix, but minor annoyance. The armrest. I really like how the armrest, I'll do a separate video of this so you can see it, but it sits really low, it slides a long way back and forth, and when it when it's sitting low it's hiding everything in your uh, in your little box under there, hidden out of the way. But it comes up to a really good height where my arm sits on it lovely um, which is brilliant however 
That brings me to the annoyance. It fouls the cup holders underneath. So they didn't think that through. Which brings me on to the cup holders. They are too small for a lot of cups. They do seem smaller than the average. So I don't know what that's about, but armrest good, cup holder bad. I've done a moderately long journeys in this, about an hour and a half is probably the longest I've done. And some cars give me backache and this doesn't. The seats look fairly basic and this, this is uh, the SE technology trim so it's got no electric seats at all it's just got a it's got a hand crank here and a, a winder here forwards and backwards a slider there and that's that's about it there's not much adjustment but no backache at all after an hour and a half so quite pleased with that I did find it difficult though to find the correct distance from my wheel what I generally do is I press my clutch put my brake fully down and then bring my seat to as far as I need to come in because I like to sit back from the steering wheel a bit and I did struggle to find a nice distance with that but no backache so that's good cruise control on a manual generally when you change gear you lose your speed and you have to press resume uh, on this, I'm in third now, 30 mile an hour cruising, pop it into fourth, and it just picks up where it left off and resumes. That's nice. That's a nice touch. It also has the lane stay, lane thing, I don't know what you call it, but uh, it's a fairly basic version of the lane stay because, for example, now it's seeing. On the dashboard there you've got the green light and as we get to that yellow line it's pushing the wheel back in so it doesn't sit in the center of the lane like would be ideal so you, if, if you let it do its thing you can end up a bit zigzag all over the place um, and it's not really what I think it's for I think really it's just to prevent a, an accidental lane departure shall we say rather than uh, just keep you centering on a lane like a, an autopilot type thing would but it does work so for purposes of demonstration I will let go of the wheel there and it's pulled it back in without without any drama so that's a good thing about it a bad thing about it it tells me sometimes I'm driving along I'm just sat here driving fine and it starts bonging up. Drive in the centre of the lane. I'm looking in my mirrors. I'm exactly central in this lane. And it could go bonging away for as long as 15 seconds. I think, will you shut up? I'm in the damn lane. So I, I don't know how to stop that. I don't know what's triggering that. It just seems to be a bit of a glitch. Um, it's a bittersweet on the lane stay. Stop start. It's got engine stop start, the bane of a lot of drivers, many drivers turn stop start off because they really don't like it. And I can see why. This one would catch you out. I'll just pull over where it's safe and I'm going to have a little demonstration of stop start. And really it's to do with stop start on a manual gearbox because if it's in gear, stop start will stop here this is a nice clear spot here not in anybody's way here so stop there and the stop starts not doing anything um, I have to put it in neutral and bring my clutch up for stop start to work so if you've got a habit you could develop a habit shall I say of putting it into first then pressing your clutch, please start the engine manually. And it's not going to do anything. You have to be in neutral. You can't be in a gear with the clutch down. 
and that can sometimes catch it out if you're a bit quick it, it, it doesn't quite sense it's in neutral and it has a little bit of a, a sulk about it but then traffic's driving away and you're sat there with the car saying please start manually and you sort of oh crap what do I do with this but you have to come back to neutral clutch up then it starts and of course there's no start key to start your engine so it won't stop now I want to demonstrate again stop please how do we stop hello stop what if I move and stop again does that force it to do it yeah there we go so I rushed it in there and it, it did it in time Making me a fool. I want my car again to make it. Oh, stall. So it does auto restart when you stall. It's quite good. Right, stop. Stop. Right, there. First gear, clutch down. Please start manually. And you have to press it. And it will do it. There. But if you imagine, if you're not familiar with that and you're in traffic and it's faffing around, it's, it's a bit, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you can turn the stop start off on this thing. I haven't found it in menus, but I haven't done huge amounts of digging in menus. Um, another little niggle that irritates me. Niggling things, little lots of little things. Let's learn. No, don't get me wrong. It does nothing terrible. Everything's all right, but little things on the um, heater controls. Generally, it's got dual controls as this. It's not got four zone or anything. It's it's a fairly basic trim. I don't even know if they could get it in a four zone, but it's got dual controls. So it's got temperature for driver, temperature for passenger, and most people, I think, have that set to equal. So you press sync. So you're going to you, you press that button there, and it goes to sync. You press sync there, and they're both the same. When you go away and come back to the car, it turns that off and it turns your air conditioning back on. So every time you get back in, if you don't want to waste fuel, because you're a tight Yorkshireman, turn air conditioning off. Do you want the whole car to the same temperature? Yes, sink. So that's a little irritation. Get them down, Ben. What else? What else? Little things. It's got the auto sensor wipers. They're nice. They they seem to be. So I found some cars there. The sensor could come in a bit late, and you're reaching for the, the stick before it's got there. This I oh, found it pretty good. I'm pleased with that. Um, not to sixty on papers. Ten point something. I'm not even going to test it. That's so pedestrian, nobody cares. Um, 10 seconds is woeful, really, but that's not what this car's built for, is it? Go on, I'll do a not to 60 just for the laugh. Because this is a this is an absolutely dead road here, so. Ready, feel the power. Check on the camera timer how long that was. Longer than anybody really cares about. Anything else to say? It's got, in the dashboard here, it's got these levels of got map. I've, I've tended not to use the map because I use the Android Auto um, and I use Google Maps. On my on my phone but you can't get the phone map from this screen to this screen so if you turn off the climate controls there and you press buttons that one the the Google map 
little bit of sat nav, it's only on there, you can't transfer it across to there. So that's all that is. Uh, radio. Is what it is. I haven't really used a radio to be honest. Um, on the other screen on here is a like a trimmed down version. That might be nice if you're driving at night when you don't want as much on screen. We need to turn this music off. How do we turn it off? That. That's it. So it doesn't like these narrow country lanes. The green, the green thing here is for the lane. When it's green, it's happy in the middle of the lane. But it's not really sensing it, I think. Oh, it's pulling us back in there, just. Um, it, but it does tantrum a lot on narrower lanes. How do we work things? Menu. I get a bit lost in this. And this is my first day with a car either. I've had it about three weeks. Um, it's actually going back tomorrow, which is why I need to get this review done today. But it's not very intuitive, to be honest. And it takes your attention off driving. It's a bit too overcomplicated. I would much prefer a switch for my heater controls, a dial, something that's tactile, tangible, it's there. Because with this, you have it to uh, rest your hand on there, because if you try and use this screen while you're driving, you're bouncing everywhere. So you rest your hand on there, and then you're pressing this, and then you're looking at it again to see if you've pressed it, because it's not tactile. So it's faffy. And I don't like the trend of car makers going towards more and more computer systems. Um, you should have a nice balance of buttons. Oh, it's bleak up here. and show you the scenery. Shush. Nice Yorkshire day. Look at that. Lovely. View from the other side. Grim. Assist systems. So what's it got? What's that? Front assist, emergency braking, advanced warning, swerve support, oncoming vehicle braking with turning. Lane assist they call this, lane keeping system. So it's not centering, which some are. It's not the quietest of cabins either. It's you can hear the rain, the noise there. You can hear the spray. The wipers aren't particularly quiet. Again, not terrible. Just okay. Where this car really shines, and I mean really shines, is the fuel economy. It's been amazing. Try and find my pictures that I took. But basically, I did a 40 mile journey, which consisted of 35 miles of motorway, about three miles of country roads, two miles of town driving. And I decided I was in no rush, so I just put cruise on 60 mile an hour, and it averaged 77.8 miles per gallon. 
77.8 miles per gallon from a two litre diesel, which is just so impressive. I mean, I've got a 1.5 diesel Ford van that will connect and that averages about 42 miles per gallon. So 70, nearly 78 miles per gallon. If you had this as a company car, you'd be making a nice profit on the fuel mileage. Because you'd be getting paid 15 pence a mile. And that's what it's built for, really. It's it's a fairly basic spec, but it's got a, a motorway engine, isn't it? So that's, you're not playing with 0 to 60 figures, but at 70 mile an hour, it's it's barely revving, and it's capable of tackling any motorway gradient, shall we say, in top gear, so you never have to change down. So yesterday, I tested it. I went it's about 35 miles from memory. I'll put the picture up. It's about 35 miles of uninterrupted cruise control. And that was at 70 mile an hour. Totally uninterrupted. 72 miles per gallon at 70 miles an hour. That's seriously impressive. Why do we why are we trying to get rid of diesels? You know, that's it's just wrong. It's so efficient. So if you're buying a car and doing a lot of miles, this is going to save you some money. The depreciation is not shocking. This is a, a 2021 um, Auto Trader this morning. I had a quick glance. This spec, this year, varied from about 12 and a half grand to 18 grand, depending on mileage. Uh, this is it's a few days off its first MOT at three years old. noticed the one of the brakes has just started to squeak on the uh, what would you call it the early wear indicator so it's probably due some brake pads to give you an idea of how long they last that's um, three years and 20 something thousand miles I think I can't still out again let's try and work that out on my computer here does it tell me on something? See, everything's so hard to find. No, it's not there. Is it on this side? Oh, there we go. 10,500 miles. So brake pads have lasted there. Staying on, go away now. I don't want to keep. Consumption, there we go. Now, the whole menu system I find fiddly. I don't, I'm not keen. You could turn off the lane assist with two presses. Back on again. Slowing down. There we go. Oh, it's gone away. Come back. No. Where's it gone? It's there. From that menu. Back. That's it. That's all it's got. Front assist. Speed limiter or cruise. Um, the limiter. Normally, I would say the speed limiter and the cruise should be in the switch. So not keen on it being in a separate menu completely because sometimes you like to switch from one to the other on the mode so I don't know why they put it deep in a menu there and not just on this switch there, I mean it's already got two switches for it so let's discuss handling um, it's an estate car it's, it's not going to handle like a Ferrari is it, but it's alright I mean this is a this is a bumpy road, twists and turns. You, know, and you can throw it in at a, it, it feels confident handling. It doesn't feel wallowy. Um, it looks 
not loaded up at all. It's not. How can I put it? On a good day, it's going to be average, isn't it? Because of what it is. It's an estate car. It is what it is. So for what it is, it's good. Brakes feel confident. I'm not sure they're, uh, they're anything special, but they've certainly not let me down. And at no point have I gone into a corner and thought, made the balls of that. You know, it's uh, it, it's took everything I've given it. And I, like I say, I've had three weeks driving it. Most of that's been around town um, just two two long journeys on motorways which it's excelled at and impressed me with on the fuel economy but most of my driving has been town and country of which it's averaged when we were doing that about 42 to gallon round town my long term average since I got it is at 49, but that includes those motorway trips as well. Reversing sensors. It's got front and rear sensors and no cameras. Again, a fairly basic spec, but they're all right. You get this little predictive thing telling you which way your wheel's pointing. Not very helpful without a camera view, but you get that beep, 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 and if you take it to the red you're still about a foot off what you're going towards and stop and quiet so there we have it a little drive in this 2021 skoda skoda Skoda, we've got the accent now, haven't we? We've got to change car names. You can't have Hyundai anymore. It's Hyundai. Or this Skoda Octavia SE Technology. Let's please make shorter names of cars. But that's what it is. Um, it's all right, isn't it? It's all right. I know I've griped it about a few, or lots of little things, shall I say. Lots of little things that could be better, which aren't. Right, let me just turn my camera around and show you one little bugbear. A little bugbear of mine is screens that this. I feel like like they designed the entire car and then went, oh crap, we've got to put a screen in. Let's just stick a tablet there, you know. It's just ugly for me. I much prefer something that's under the brow. You know, if this brow came along here and tuck it in and yeah or if it's going to stick up like this make it adjust so it points to the driver maybe i don't know it just it feels like an afterthought stop griping ben be nice so it's all right everything's all right except the fuel economy which is fantastic i just yeah i can't fault the fuel economy i've at no point have i driven the car and thought Let's try and drive economically to save fuel because it just does so many miles per gallon. You just don't care. So as a second-hand purchase, three-year-old car, there'll be lots of these coming off PCPs, won't there? There'll be lots of ex-company cars, lease deals, all that sort of thing. There's going to be loads of these coming off deals. This one, it's 10,000 miles on the clock. You know, you could pick this up for probably 14 grand or so, 15 grand maybe. You know, it's it's depreciated a big chunk of what it's going to lose, and these yeah these don't massively lose money, do they? They're uh, a relatively big car for the UK, shall we say, but they don't lose money like the big seven series, the Audi A8s that hemorrhage money from new. You know, this is a good second-hand purchase.